All right, so for anyone wondering why Samsung had been pulling an Apple, we finally get some details. Because yes, uh, the company just addressed what's really going on with their throttling on Galaxy devices, sort of. And then we have a ton of new leaks on products that didn't make the cut on Apple's peak performance event, and we might be getting two new and interesting foldables from Oppo this year. I'm Jaime Rivera, and uh, happy Friday from a very jet-lagged person who's back in New York just in time for another winter warning. This is Pocket Out Daily. The official news today begin with nothing, and your puns are welcomed. It's not like if any of us chose the name for the company. A few days ago, the company announced that they'll be hosting an event on March 23rd at 10 a.m. Eastern. This will be a virtual one that's currently titled The Truth, and nothing says that they'll be announcing their roadmap for 2022 at this special event. Now, the company also announced a new $70 million in funding, which elevates their reach to $144 million to this date, and they'll be revealing more information on the funding at their event. Event. The thing about it is we think we'll be getting more than just the roadmap at this event. Lately, we've seen some subtle teasers from Carl Pei on a nothing smartphone. And uh, earlier this week, we even saw him playing around with a prototype, which we don't know if it's a nothing phone. A report from TechCrunch claims that this phone could be launched as soon as next month. So we expect to see some sort of announcement on March 23rd. I mean, we'll see how far the teasers go. Let's shift gears on to Oppo and their foldables, as a, the company wants to bank on the hype and success of their Find N, even if technically that phone never left China. Now we have a new report from Digital Chat Station where we have claims that Oppo is working on two different prototypes of uh, foldables for 2022. That includes a clamshell style foldable with a horizontal hinge and the unique smartphone with a rollable display. Now, the leak also mentions that Oppo has been surprised by the find then success in China, and now they want to explore what happens in other markets as well. But going back to the upcoming foldables, let's talk prices. I mean, the clamshell foldable would reportedly be at the same price as the Galaxy Z Flip 3, while the rollable one will be targeted at the high-end segment with a price tag of around 1600 bucks. Oh, and this rollable model would also have a bigger screen than the find then? I mean, there's no word on when Oppo plans to announce these new foldables, but uh, given Given how the find then went, uh, I mean, we might be getting it at Eno Day uh, 2022, which, I mean, it sadly happens in December, so don't hold your breath. I know, I know. The Apple event just happened a few days ago, but uh, we got some new leaks of products that didn't make the cut on Tuesday, which we did read your comments for. For starters, we have a new tweet from Ming Shi Kuo where he mentions that the new MacBook Air will go into production in late Q2 or during Q3. Apparently, it'll be powered by the M1. Notice this, and we uh, won't be getting a mini LED display, but we can expect a new design and more color options like previously stated. Now, moving on there was a possibility of a mac mini and that it would be coming but now we get more information and it gets kind of weird because we have a new report from nine to five mac mentioning that the new mac mini will feature apple's m2 chip and there will also be another variant rocky and m2 pro we got two different models and even model numbers for these machines and the m2 pro will allegedly rock a 12 core cpu instead of the 10 core that we're currently getting on the m1 pro then you've got minchi Kuo claiming that there is a mac pro and an iMac Pro and at least one Mac Mini next year. So we don't know if these are different machines. I mean, anyways, finally, we also got a tweet from Ross Young talking about another display. He says that he'll still be expecting a 27 inch mini LED display from Apple coming in June, perhaps a studio display pro. And uh, he mentions that he has confirmed with multiple companies in Cupertino supply chain. So new redesigned MacBook Air with an M1, two or three Mac Minis with different processors, and the Studio Display Pro. I mean, it, it's getting confusing, but leaks always are. And finally, for the hottest news today, let's talk about Samsung and the whole drama that's been going on about the throttling of their devices. Just as a quick recap, late last week, there was some video showing how Samsung was throttling Galaxy devices by using their game optimizer service that uh, you couldn't get rid of. The company then put out a quick statement saying that they would address the issue, but uh, now they're offering more of an explanation. Now we have a list of FAQs about 
the behavior of their optimization system and uh, talked about their future plans for it. I mean, Samsung says that the feature optimizes the CPU and GPU performance of your device so that excessive heat isn't generated. Then they're reiterating that there will be an update released that'll bring a toggle to allow applications to run at full scale. They're arguing that the list of 10,000 applications that was published last week is not a list of apps throttled by their servers, and instead, this list allows Galaxy devices to determine whether the newly installed application is a game or not, which is kind of weird. And um, they also confirm that benchmark applications are not a gaming application, so they're not covered by the service. It's kind of convenient, though, considering that applications that weren't even gaming apps showed some throttling. On another twist, Sammy might allow users to completely disable the service, but they won't offer free repairs due to overheating if they're using their performance priority toggle unless its warranty is still available. Earlier today, they started rolling out that performance update in Korea. So, I mean, in today's question, let us know, uh, should throttling smartphones be a thing regardless of the reasons? Because sure, companies can argue performance over time, but I think the consumer consumer should have the choice at the end of the day. Unless that consumer is my 12-year-old son Andres who nearly fried his computer over learning how to overclock the thing just to show that he could play with more frames on Fortnite. Oh well. Anyways, that's just me. Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. And also follow us on social media so our extended coverage happens on Instagram and follow me on my personal handles to see me. Sorry, I suffer. I hate the cold. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you over the weekend.